How you doing? I'm meteorologist Paul Diano with your Western Washington weather webcast. That blue you see right there is equatorial Pacific Ocean heat. And anything below 0.5 in the negative is a La Nina situation. It is October 1st, and that's really the beginning date. Today is when we begin to measure the impacts of La Nina. Now, I know today is going to be sunny and 73 degrees, so certainly not a La Nina impact there. But once we get into October, that's when we begin to talk about not that La Nina is coming, but now we can say La Nina is here. Moderate to strong one, the strongest one at this point in time in 55 years. And what does this mean for our forecast? Everybody wants to know more snow or not, more windstorms or not, more rain or not, colder or not. There was a workshop at the National Weather Service office talking specifically about La Nina and our winter weather. That was yesterday, September 30th. And we got down more to the specifics as to what we can expect. I've summarized my notes in this sheet, and we're going to break down each one. First off, a very strong signature, 70 to 80 percent likelihood. Not a guarantee. Remember, none of these things is a guarantee. Just increases the likelihood of these things happening. Number one, a wet fall, OND, October, November, December. Let's go over to here and look at the official precipitation forecast for October, November, and December. Look at that. The whole country, the strongest signature lead time, perhaps as far as three months from now, is a very high likelihood of above normal rainfall in the fall. Now, it's already wet here. We already get a lot of rainfall. That's, that happens almost every year. This would be above what is average, above what is normal. Even more than that, there's a very high likelihood, not a guarantee, but a high likelihood of that happening. Next up, a cold winter. Notice I'm not saying wet in the fall and winter. The biggest signature is wet in the fall through the end of the year, then cold in the winter, JFM, January, February, and March. Let's take a look at that. Temperature, January, February, March 2011. Now this is another strong signature just for our part of the country. The strongest signature for below normal temperatures. Once again, it's already chilly around here. The highest signature, or highest likelihood of below normal temperatures, January, February, and March would be western Washington, right in the heart of that La Nina pattern. And snowfall. Well, if it's going to be wetter and it's going to be colder, especially in the mountains, you're going to get more snow. That's kind of intuitively correct. But um, the snowpack is greatly impacted, as is the likelihood of lowland snow, greatly impacted by La Nina. Those chances go up. Big snowpack, better chance of lowland snow. A couple things we have to talk about, though, because I think a lot of folks out there think that, oh, it's La Nina, so it's going to pour every day, it's going to snow a ton, it's going to be this, it's going to be that. This is just a prediction. I'll be the first to tell you that after five days, uh, we're looking at an educated guess. Weather will always be an educated guess. It's that guess lead time will get better and we'll get more accurate as time goes on. But after five days, we're looking at predictions, not guarantees. And La Nina is never a guarantee. These things, which are very likely to happen, still 70 or 80% chance. There have been La Ninas in the past that were warmer than normal and were drier than normal and had less snow than normal. But more likely than not, the prediction, not the guarantee, is for a wet fall and a cold winter. Also, we can't predict one event and we can't predict extreme events. I think this is really important because most of the winters that we remember from our childhood or from, hey, I was caught here when this happened. Remember that big snow in December of 2008? Remember when it hit five degrees at my house? Uh, those things can't be predicted. It could be cold all winter, quote-unquote, by a degree or two, and meteorologists would say, well, that was a cold winter. You'll remember the warm winter with the one day where it fell to five degrees. Or you'll remember the dry fall where it rained five inches and caused a really big flood on one day. And those singular events that we remember winters by can't be predicted by something like La Nina. Now, windstorms, a lot of you have asked about that. Hard to really look out because, once again, that would be an extreme event. But when it comes to windstorms, 40 miles per hour or greater, specifically at SeaTac. La Nina falls typically have fewer of those. La Nina winters typically have more of those. So windstorms, if you're looking for those, I know a lot of you love active weather, that's more likely in the winter than it is in the fall, even though it will be wetter than normal in the fall. And folks, we have to remember this too. Winters around here, they are pretty cold. They are pretty wet. So that's pretty much a guarantee. The question is how wet and how cold will it be? Well, with La Nina, there's a good chance that we're going to be seeing a lot of cold and a lot of wet coming up over the next several months. But the first day of October, sunshine 73. We'll get into a cooler pattern next week. Not a washout, but we're certainly done with the 70s for a while. Highs in the 60s. And if we actually look at this over here, this would be the outlook for October 6th through the 10th. 
above normal temperature wise and the outlook all the way out to the middle of October is above normal temperature wise. So how can you have one without the other? Well, two different schools of thought. You're looking at an entire three month period, likely cooler than normal and wetter than normal. Now we're looking at a specific two week chunk. It's like uh, one quarter of a football game. The Seahawks might have a really bad first quarter. They've had some of those, but they might win the game. Same story here. It may start off warm in early October, which is great, but it will likely finish cooler than normal. So what to expect? Very likely a wet fall through December, a cold winter beginning January, and an increased likelihood, but not a guarantee of more snow. That is your primer on La Nina on this October 1st. Thanks for watching a rather long Western Washington weather webcast, but packed with information, and let the fall and winter games begin.